Welcome to the Electromagnetic Works video tutorial series, a collection of videos that show firsthand how accurately and how quickly you can get designs analyzed and optimized inside SOLIDWORKS. This video will show you how to use our electromechanical simulation package EMS to simulate a coil surrounded by two steel channels inside SOLIDWORKS. Before a simulation can be started, the CAT model of the insulator must be built or imported into SOLIDWORKS. SOLIDWORKS offers excellent help and training materials such as tutorials that cover the pre-analysis phase. We will simply start with a readily built model, which consists of a coil that's surrounded by two steel channels and the steel plate placed in between the channels. Note that there are also two parts that are composed of air that are found in the assembly. One part represents the small air gap placed in between the steel plate and the steel channels. Fields can be strong there. The outer air box is used as an enclosure volume. This part should be made sufficiently large to ensure that fields are small enough at its far edge. This way discontinuities are avoided. At this stage, the model is ready for simulation. In the EMS tab, you will find the assembly and create the study. A transient magnetic study is required for this analysis. By setting the start time, the end time, and the increment of each time step, the transient study is defined and ready for inputs. The first step before running the analysis is to define all of the materials for all the bodies. EMS has a wide range of materials in the library. You also have the option to create a new material or edit an existing material. For now, we will apply air to the small air gaps in between the steel plates and the steel channels, as well as the large air box. The coil is composed of copper. This can be found in the non-magnetic materials section. For the steel components, a new material will be created. By creating a new folder and selecting the Create Edit Material button, you can create a new material by entering its name and all of its electric parameters. These include the permeability, the permittivity, the conductivity, as well as other properties. With the material now created, you can apply it on any body, just as you would with any existing materials in the library. And now that all of the materials have been assigned, a blue check mark appears next to the solids icon. The next step is to apply loads and restraints. In the transient magnetic module, this includes the normal flux. To apply the normal flux, you need to choose a plane of symmetry or an outer plane of the air box in which you are sure that the flux density is going to be headed in a normal direction to that face. In this example, the top and bottom faces of the airbox will have normal flux applied to them. The next step is to apply coils, either a solid coil or a wound coil with multiple turns. This example has a wound coil. By selecting the body and the direction of the current, you would have the coil set. Choose the entry face as well as the exit face of the current. In symmetry models, you would normally choose the exit face. However, since this is a full model, you select the same face as that of entry. Then you apply the number of turns, and then specify the current. In the transient magnetic module, the current is set as a function of time. Op you can either open a current time curve as a text file, or you can create one from scratch in the curve data box. You can modify the current data by inserting or deleting rows. The last step before running the analysis is to create the finite element mesh. Meshing is easy in EMS. Simply set the global size and the tolerance for small spaces, and then the mesh will be generated. Of course, some bodies are smaller than others, so it is a good idea to apply a mesh control for those bodies 
to give them a finer mesh. For example, the coil will have a mesh control of 8 mm. The steel components will also have a mesh control. This will be much finer than that of the coil, 1.1 mm. More importantly, the small air gap will need a mesh control. This mesh control will be two tenths of a millimeter. All bodies that do not have a mesh control, in this example the outer air box, will follow the global mesh size. In this case, 40 millimeters will be the element size, and the tolerance will be five one hundredths of a millimeter. With the mesh now complete, you can review it, make modifications to the preprocessing inputs, or run the analysis. With the study complete, you can view a wide range of results, either numerically, or in plots in either 3D or in 2D. The numerical results can be defined in a report where you can select or deselect certain types of results for publication, and you can produce the report in HTML or Word document format. The results table displays the inductance, the flux linkage, the power and the energy at each time step. The plot results of the transient magnetic study include the magnetic flux density, the magnetic field, the applied current, the ED current, and the force density. They can be viewed in continuous 3D plots, or in vector plots. Each time step has its own set of plots. Field plots can also be viewed within the assembly itself, using either a section view, where you can view it depending on the position, by setting planes at certain displacements or angles, or you can view them using an isoclip, which will depend on the magnitude rather than the position. With one study fully analyzed, you might want to make some minor changes or some major changes, either create a new study from scratch with a different analysis type, or make a copy of an existing study where you can make some minor changes to the materials, the preprocessing inputs, and the You can either run these analyses individually, or you can have them run all in parallel by selecting Run All Studies. For more information on our products, you can visit our website.